members' opening statements will be made a part of the record. The chair notes that some members may have additional questions for these two panels, which they may wish to submit in writing. Without objection, the hearing record will remain open for 30 days for members to submit written questions to these witnesses and to place their responses in the record. I also ask unanimous consent that those non-subcommittee members who are present be recognized if they wish to give opening statements or ask questions. I now recognize myself for five minutes for an opening statement. First, I want to thank our two colleagues for being here today, and they will be recognized shortly. But as many members know, that uh, the subject of the Federal Reserve and monetary policy has been something that I've been interested in for a long time, believing that it has a great deal of significance, you know, with regards to a healthy e economy. Today, we'll be discussing the various proposals to address the subject of some of the shortcomings of the monetary system. And I think what has happened here in these last five years, it has been recognized by many that uh, monetary policy in the Federal Reserve has a lot to do with the creation of some of our problems and their shortcomings when it comes to solving these problems. The Federal Reserve has been around for almost 100 years, 100 years next year. And of course, it has gone would generally act and the uh, Federal Reserve
I have the various members today, as well as uh, on the second panel, to discuss what I consider a very, very important issue. And now I would like to yield five minutes to Mr. Clay. Thank you, uh, Chairman.
information has, I think, helped dispel the notion that there were nefarious things going on. We've gotten a lot of information out. Under the legislation we have, there will be no transactions the Federal Reserve engages in with private companies that won't at some point be made public. And I think that has reflected well on what they've done and, again, suggestions that there was something untoward going on haven't uh, been proven true. Now, I filed legislation to remove the regional presidents from the voting Out. Uh, the interventions by the Fed to deal with the problems that we had from the financial crisis have not led to inflation. Inflation is not at the point where it has become a serious problem for people. The loans that they've made, the interventions they've made, have actually made money for the federal government. They have not added to the deficit. And as I said, the, 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 the openness shows they haven't caused...
Not only do we um, focus on root price indexes of goods and services, but those potential asset bubbles not only be monitored but reported to you and I and to the public as well. I have a question for Mr. Frank, but I'm out of time, but I think there's going to be a second round, so hopefully I can get my question asked. I, I now yield to, uh, to Mr. Gray. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Let me, let me ask uh, uh, both witnesses. Um, Currently, the uh, unemployment rate, according to the Labor Department, is 8.1 percent. What can the Federal Reserve and Congress do to put Americans back to work? Uh, Mr. Brady, you have any thoughts or views on that? I do. Uh, one, I think the Fed is trying to do too much. They're trying to make up for, I think, some, some failed economic policies, in my view, from the White House, and I also believe uh, they're sort of like the doctor who gives you a pill every five minutes and says, how are you feeling? Take another one. How are you feeling? Take another one. As a result of actually creating uncertainty, I believe the Fed, the more the Fed does, the less responsibility Congress and the White House is taking for getting the right fiscal decisions right, getting the right tax policy, getting back
Constitutionality of it, and, and you made, I think, a good point, saying that uh, it would make it perhaps more constitutional if we had the presidential appointment uh, here, that it becomes not a private sector but more a public sector. But it raises the fundamental question that I thought that the chairman would raise, is where is the constitutionality for either one of the proposals that are before here? Thank <laughs> you. 